Hiya folks! Welcome to the second video for art journaling for 2016 um, of July, July of 2016. I am starting with some cans and watercolor paper and I'm covering it with some Liquitex gesso using a Simply, Simon, Simply Simmons wash brush. Uh, I don't always cover my art journal pages in gesso but today I wanted to play with some ink and I wanted it to move a little bit before it uh, started to soak into the paper. So I needed a bit of of something, whether it was a ground or um, maybe a gel medium or something. Though a gel medium, uh, the ink would almost never dry. So I went with the gesso, and I've got out some De La Rowney, uh FW Acrylic Artist inks, and they are fabulous. I have quite a few colors here. I'm going to start with a warm palette. I've got some pinks and oranges, um, a yellow and maybe like a kind of like a carmine red um, and I'll get those exact exact names down um, in the supply list and I'm kind of just starting by splattering it all around and uh, I did wet the page first to kind of help those inks stay wet a little bit longer and um, I've played with inks a little bit but definitely the more I do it the more I know that I need to work more in layers and less in putting so much down at one time. So I'm glad to know that now because of course that's a technique or a tip that I can pass on to you and to my art journaling gals as well. You can see I lost quite a bit of the pink so I tried to add it back in and I am kind of spritzing with water here and there as well as drying with the heat gun at the same time and what that does is it dries some of the thinner areas and then I'm adding water to also um, which is keeping some of the thicker areas wet longer and it kind of just lets the the acrylic ink play back and forth and create kind of a watercolor feel um, but the colors are very bright compared to most watercolors and it's not necessarily that I'm going for anything specific at this moment. I just know that I for sure want to get like a, a nice bright background going. I want something um, varied and I, I want it to be um, either ombre effect or or sort of just kind of like random colors all over. I'm not going for a specific thing. I'm not trying to make a sunset or a landscape or anything like that. I'm merely getting some color down and I actually really love that right there where I sop up the extra ink and it creates a void it kind of added back in some white space and that was nice for me uh, now that my warm colors I want to make sure that they're extra dry because I want to come back in with some cool colors on top so the warm colors in the spectrum are the oranges the reds and the yellows with variations and then the cool colors are the yellows the blues and the purples and the thing about that is um, if you mix all the colors at one time the idea is that you'll get black um, but I went in and I added this teal on top of my warm colors and because the ink is fairly transparent um, then my warm colors are showing through so even though I didn't mix them while they were wet the colors um, are because of the way they layered up are still looking almost mixed to our eye kind of to our brain that's how it's interpreting interpreting it because the layers are thinner and they're on top of each other so I put down a teal and it ended up kind of green because of the yellow or the gold the kind of golden orange was underneath it but it's all right I'm having fun I'm gonna keep going and keep moving and I'm like I said I'm not really aiming for anything specific yet I was just getting some color on the background uh, I know that I don't use color that well um, or that often and I definitely need to practice so I threw up some color and I'm just making sure that all that's dry because now I'm going to go in with a Stabilo pencil a Marksol and I'm, you can see that corner was still a little bit wet I'm going to sketch in some kind of tall skinny leaf shapes and I don't know in the end if they end up being pods or a forest, their trees, their leaves, their flowers, buds, I'm not sure. But that's kind of the fun. I really want to work a lot harder on trying some of the techniques that I've got pinned or different things that I've kind of got going on in my head and um, more specifically like I want to work more with fine arts uh, and not so much the mass-produced type of, of art creating. Um, 
and yeah, so I'm just practicing. I'm working on that, and that's uh, that's where this page is leading. So I'm kind of drawing in the shapes that I like, and and I threw down some color, drew in the shapes I liked, and now I've got some some Blick gesso, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to block out the negative space. So all that color that I put down is now going to be the shape of my trees or buds or pods or whatever they are. So my shapes. I'm going to, I, the color is going to be my shapes and I'm going to block out and add back in the white space and the negative space using gesso. And I'm using the Dick Blick gesso because I like, I think I've mentioned this before, but it's kind of a medium gesso. It's a medium thickness as far um, as, as thickness goes. Things like the Liquitex Professional Gesso is is fairly thin, and then the Liquitex Heavy Gesso is super thick. So this is kind of somewhere in between, which I really like, because it gives me good coverage, but not too much, and it doesn't create too much texture in case I'm not really ready for that. And I'm just going to spend some time here um, following the shapes that I drew and, and blocking out areas. I will say that because I used a Stabilo Marksol, it is picking up, the gesso is wet, so it's picking up some of that Marksol and creating kind of a fun like gray variant in the background. Also, towards the edges of the page, I left more color. So the shapes that I do are going to be very colorful, but then the edges of the page have a little bit of color peeking through too. And it's very cool and it's sort of like under painter, under painting-ish. So you can see some of that, some of that imagery and some of those colors um, coming through from the layer underneath, and and that's one of the things I'm trying to remember too. You know, it's layers that really, really uh, make a page stand out, that make a page great, that make whatever it is a, a canvas or art journaling or or, or whatever you're working on um, tags. It's it's layers that that really catch us. So. Even though it seems like I'm covering up a bunch of stuff, I try to remind myself that it's just one more step. Go ahead and move forward. Go, go with your idea. Go with your gut. Um, a lot of people are calling it intuitive painting or intuitive mixed media, but just kind of keep moving forward and, and try not to get too vested in the layers that are underneath and the patterns that you're seeing. And when you're drawing your, your shapes, you know, if there's an image that you really like or an area that you really like, just select that out. Just just draw your your pod or your your whatever shape. You can do flowers or raindrops. I guess these kind of look like raindrops. Um, you can do whatever shape you like. You know, but if there's an area that you really like, you like how the yellow and the pink play together, or you like that there's kind of a little bit of splatters going on, or or anything like that. Um, just block those out to become one of your shapes and then you'll still have that and you can do your your whiting, your white out around it. Just going back and forth here and layering and, and you can really see right now on that one I'm working on how that stabilo, I really picked up a lot of that gray stabilo on the left side. It's very nice. I think I end up covering it up a bit but just one of those things. And I did lose the stems, but that's no big deal. I'm going to come back with another tool and a, um, another product in just a few and draw those, those stems and things back in. So you can see here I did two layers of the gesso very specifically. So there were some areas that I wanted to white out just a bit more, but I was careful to leave some color kind of in the corners and along the edges like I mentioned earlier. And there is a little bit in the middle too, especially where I picked up some of the stabilo. But it's fun and, and it's different. I feel like it's really different for me. Um, I stepped away from the stencils. I stepped away from the stamps. And I I just kind of had some fun. And I really like it. I'm excited for the art journaling girls to, to try it. And I can't wait to see what everyone does. I'm kind of fine tuning some of the edges that seem to have gotten a little out of control or maybe I maybe I wasn't paying uh, very good attention when I was kind of going around earlier not getting quite close enough but 
more just blocking out some areas and and it's definitely a work in progress like it's a you know you got to take one step at a time it's not everything's going to happen right away it's a process so there I'm fairly happy with that I think and that leaf right there or that pod that's one of my favorites that kind of pink and yellow I think when I recreate this for art journaling I'll have to uh, give that a go keeping it kind of pink and yellow so here now I've got out uh, my fine liner and it is 50 percent golden fluid acrylic and carbon black and 50 percent airbrush medium and now I'm going back in and I'm outlining those shapes, those outlines that I kind of lost from the Stabilo. I'm doing them with permanent ink now. So this is, or paint, you know, carbon, carbon black from Fluid Acrylic by Golden and um, the Airbrush Medium. And I'm just outlining those and adding the stems back in and, and I'm being sketchy about it on purpose and I'm kind of just having fun and and making it a bit whimsical and and this is kind of where it started to come through a bit as a forest for me and right there on that one I just did it got kind of thick and I thought oh I don't know if I really like that but then the more I looked at it then I really liked it and decided to do it to all of them so now I'm kind of adding thicker bottoms on those and really just pulling some of that blackness in and it's really nice against the color and that white background that I worked on Yeah, loving it. And I can use that, that, um, goodness, sorry, use that fine liner to kind of create some splatters. And you just give it a quick squeeze and then flick it with your wrist. And, and it does these kind of medium-sized splatters, which are nice. But I'll come back in a little bit and do some darker ones or bigger and smaller ones. Oh, or maybe I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just adding the same mixture because I want the same consistency and the same color. And then I'm going to get out a thin paintbrush. It's a script brush. And it probably has just a tiny bit of water in it also. And I'm using that to splatter in some of those areas that I had the medium sized splatter from the fine liner before. I do a lot of heating. Um, usually when I work, I do something and then I step away. I do a layer and then I step away. But sometimes when everything seems to be going really well, uh, I just get out my my heat gun to help things move along quicker. I did just use the Stabilo to kind of darken that area where I, the bottoms of each of the kind of little petal shapes. And now I'm using a brush and some water and kind of drawing those up. It's just to add a little bit of dimension and a little bit of shading and shadow and kind of adds a little bit of realism to my whimsy. I also have a paper towel on hand and that is so that when the Stabilo seems to get too dark I can kind of lift some of that that up and my color comes back kind of bright but I've still got that haziness in there from the Stabilo as a shadow. All right, we're coming close to the end here. And with the Stabilo Marks All, even though I'm heating it so that it's dry, it's not permanent. If I were to add water back to it, it would just reactivate right away and move around underneath my paintbrush again. So keep that in mind. Uh, I've come back in with my fine liner and now I'm adding some little tops to my pods and uh, it kind of reminded me a little bit of like a tall skinny pomegranate or something. Really enjoy it. make sure those are dry and then I'm going to add in some handwriting and I really love incorporating my handwriting it's one of the greatest things I ever picked up um, the the people that I really gained interest from um, using their handwriting Dina Wakely and Donna Downey both of them really enjoy it when they when they include their personal handwriting and or cursive in their work 
it adds such a flavor and it's so it's so unique to every person um, I am using a scarlet lime pen my my really good friend Michelle got me one of these and uh, they don't have them anymore in the scarlet lime store it's they got discontinued but uh, um, I think a number two blick pen would work just as well I'm gonna pick up a pack and double check so don't hold me accountable on that I haven't tried them but I will I know that the one of the really important things is to not use a felt tip pen, so your microns or anything like that, your Sharpies. Uh, all the texture that comes from the gesso and the paints and the layers in your mixed media will just eat the eat the felt right up, right up. So, so don't do anything like that. But uh, yeah, I just I have a little dialogue going on in my head, and I'm going up the left side of the stem and the pod on each of these. And then, because the right side seemed a little kind of mm, sad or like a little bit lacking, but I didn't want to do more handwriting because I was really enjoying it on the left side, um, I'm going to come back in with that pen and do some scribbling. So I'm just going to follow the shape of each of the pods and the stems, but because it's a, a ballpoint pen, this Scarlet Lime pen, it's quite a bit thinner than the fine liner was, and it just is a very cool kind of sketchy kind of just just scribbly fun feel and that's it oh I do come back and do a few more splatters I will say that loving the splatters and they they that white background that I kind of had going on it ended up being just a tad um, thick or just um I guess hmm how do I want to put it like it just ended up being too vibrant for the page but so I'll do a few splatters and uh, that's it all right so thanks so much for joining me I will see you in August the next art journaling class is on my birthday so that's so exciting um stop by my society six where I added uh, this to some products and um, subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can find a link of supplies in the bottom of this YouTube post and or in the bottom of this blog post all right thanks so much I will see you again soon